My stepmother Olivia disliked me a lot. She saw me not as a stepson, but as an unwanted reminder of her husband's previous life. Filled with resentment, she secretly plotted with a rich woman who had moved in nearby. Their secret plan was to sell me along with the farm, cutting all her ties to my existence. However, Fake had different ideas, and a surprising turn of events changed everything, leading to a series of unforeseen events that altered my life forever. Hello, my name is Jack, and I'm going to share a story that weaves through deep deception and paths of redemption. My story starts in the small town of Bern, Switzerland, where I lived on a large chicken farm. To an outsider, it might have looked charming, but for me, it was a battlefield. I was just 12 years old, but life had already forced me to take on the responsibilities of an adult. My mother died when I was born, an event that shaped my whole life. My father, overwhelmed with sadness and alcohol, found comfort in drinking rather than in being there for the son who needed him. Not long after, he brought Olivia into our lives. To her, I was merely a living reminder of a past she wanted to forget. Our home, if you could call it that, was sustained by the little money we made from our chicken farm. We sold eggs and chickens to make ends meet, but often, my father wasted our earnings at Joe's Tavern, leaving us on the edge of poverty. Every morning, as the sun cast long shadows over the dewy fields, I would be out feeding the chickens and collecting eggs while the rest of the world was still asleep. My small hands, rough and calloused, carried the weight of a life I never chose. School became a distant memory, a place for other children, not for someone who had to keep a farm running. But our story takes a darker turn the day Olivia's true nature came to light. I remember overhearing her one chilly morning. Her voice was sharp and secretive as she talked to someone on the phone about a solution to her problems. I didn't understand it then, but I felt a chill that wasn't from the cold. That's when Mrs. Patrick entered our lives. A widow, rich and mysterious, she had recently moved into a large estate near our farm. Her arrival was the talk of the town, but for Olivia, it was an opportunity. I later learned that Olivia saw a chance to get rid of me by making a deal with Mrs. Patrick. I first met Mrs. Patrick one evening when the sky was painted with streaks of crimson and purple. She came to our farm pretending to be interested in buying it. Her eyes, sharp and assessing, seemed to see more than what was obvious. There was a kindness in her manner, but her presence made me feel uneasy. Jack, show Mrs. Patrick around the farm, Olivia ordered, her voice dripping with a sweetness that didn't reach her eyes. As I led Mrs. Patrick around, showing her the coops and the feed sheds, her questions dug deeper than I expected. You manage all this on your own, Jack. She asked, her voice tinged with something I couldn't quite place. Was it concern or curiosity? Yes, ma'am, it's a lot of work, but I manage, I replied. I replied, trying to hide the tiredness in my voice as clear as the dirt on my boots. Mrs. Patrick looked at me a bit longer than needed, her eyes full of deep thoughts. As we walked back to the house, the setting sun stretched long shadows across the path, making it look eerie and twisted. That night, as I lay in bed listening to the distant call of an owl, I overheard Olivia speaking quietly with my father. They were planning something big, something that would change everything. The bits of conversation I caught were enough to make me panic. We'll be free of the burden, Olivia said eagerly, once she takes the farm, and him. Their laughter, cold and cruel, reached up to my small attic room. I lay there, crushed by the weight of their plans. What did they mean? Was I the burden they wanted to be free of? Question after question raced through my mind, each more disturbing than the last. As dawn broke the next day, I woke up with a determination I had never felt before. I knew I needed to find out what was being planned behind closed doors. Little did I know, the answers would completely shake my world. It started like any other day on the farm, with the roosters crowing and the chickens bustling about, unaware of the human schemes unfolding around them. But today, I was not just feeding them. I was also watching and listening for any clue of what might happen next. After my usual morning chores, I quietly made my way back to the house. The front door was slightly open a careless mistake, or maybe a chance I needed. I pressed my ear to the gap and listened. Inside, Olivia and my father were speaking in low, urgent voices with Mrs. Patrick, who had come back pretending to finalize the sale of the farm. We appreciate your generous offer, Mrs. Patrick, my father said, 
his words slurred and smelling of last night's alcohol. We're ready to move forward. This place and the boy, it's all too much for us now. Mrs. Patrick's voice was smooth like honey, but with a sharp edge that made me shiver. I understand your situation, and I assure you I can take care of everything. The farm will be in good hands, and so will Jack. The way she said my name sent a shiver down my spine. Was she just another bad person in this plot, or was there something more? Determined to find answers, I took a risk later that day while Olivia was in town, and my father was sleeping off another drinking session. I approached Mrs. Patrick as she was checking the farm's borders. Mrs. Patrick, I began, my voice steadier than I felt. Why do you want to buy our farm, and why are you interested in me? She looked at me closely for a long moment, her eyes searching mine. Then, to my surprise, she sighed. Jack, sometimes adults have to make tough choices, but I promise, whatever happens, I'll make sure you're safe. Her words confused me. They seemed kind, but I was still unsure about her true intentions. Over the next few days, things at home got tense. Olivia's looks were sharp and calculating, and my father avoided my eyes, his usual indifference replaced by a hint of guilt. They were planning to leave. One night, I heard them talking about a new life, one without the farm and without me. The day before everything was to be finalized with Mrs. Patrick, I decided to confront Olivia. I found her in the kitchen, packing dishes with more care than she had ever shown me. Olivia, I said, my voice cracking with a mix of fear and anger, what's going to happen to me? She stopped and turned slowly, her expression cold. Jack, you're going to a better place. Mrs. Patrick will take good care of you better than we ever could. But I don't want to leave, I protested, my voice rising. Olivia's expression hardened. It's not about what you want, Jack. It's for the best. That night, unable to sleep, I lay in bed listening to the whispers of the wind through the cracked window, my heart heavy, my future uncertain. The next morning, Mrs. Patrick would return to our farm to finalize the sale, and supposedly, my fate. As dawn crept over the horizon, casting long shadows across the fields, I made a decision. I couldn't just wait to see what would happen to me. Mrs. Patrick stepped forward, addressing the officers with a clear and firm tone. There seems to be some misunderstanding here. I have not agreed to take Jack permanently. I was approached by these two about buying the farm and possibly providing Jack with temporary guardianship while they sort out their issues. The officers listened intently, taking notes. One of them turned to me, his voice kind but probing. Jack, have they discussed with you any details about moving or living arrangements other than what you've just mentioned? I shook my head, the weight of the unknown pressing down on me. No, sir. They just told me I'd be staying with Mrs. Patrick for a while because it's too hard for them now. The officer nodded, then focused on Olivia and my father. We need to investigate these claims thoroughly. It's important that any decision about Jack's welfare follows legal procedures and is made in his best interest. Olivia looked visibly shaken, her voice barely a whisper as she tried to explain. We just thought it would be better for Jack. We can't provide for him the way he needs. The atmosphere was tense, each person's anxiety palpable. Mrs. Patrick then addressed me directly, her gaze softening. Jack, regardless of what happens, I want you to know that my offer to help is sincere. But any long-term decision will need to be properly vetted and approved. The officers then suggested they all go inside to discuss the matter further and check some paperwork. We also have a social worker who will need to speak with Jack and assess his living conditions, one officer added as they ushered the group towards the house. As they moved inside, I stood there for a moment, trying to process everything. The fear of the unknown mingled with a flicker of hope, knowing that these officers might just help me find a stable and caring environment. The future was still uncertain, but for the first time in a long while, I felt like there were adults around who might actually look out for my best interests. I never planned to take Jack away without his agreement or the proper legal steps. I was here to talk about buying the farm, but when I found out about the child situation, I became worried. I contacted the police because I was concerned for his safety and well-being. The officers nodded and then turned their attention back to Olivia and my father. We need to check some documents and have a longer talk about Jack's custody and your financial actions, one officer said, gesturing for them to lead the way inside. As they walked into the house, Mrs. Patrick stayed back with me for a moment. 
Jack, no matter what happens today, I want you to know that my home is always open to you, and not because of any deal, but because you deserve a safe and loving place, she said. Her words felt like a warm blanket around my shivering shoulders. I nodded, not fully understanding the legal details, but feeling a spark of hope in the midst of the chaos. Inside, the officers started their questioning, pulling out documents that Olivia and my father struggled to explain. It quickly became clear that there were mistakes and possibly fake information in the paperwork related to the farm sale. As the officers dug deeper, Olivia's cover finally fell apart. It was all his idea, she burst out, pointing a trembling finger at my father. He wanted to sell the farm and get rid of the kid. I just went along with it. My father, his face now showing despair, looked at me his eyes finally meeting mine. Jack, I'm sorry. I thought it would be better for you. The room spun around me as accusations were made and confessions came out. The officers took notes, their faces serious. The betrayal hurt, but the truth coming out also brought a strange relief. Finally, the reality of my life was being acknowledged by those who could change it. As the morning turned into afternoon, decisions were made. Olivia and my father were taken into custody for further questioning, and I was left in the temporary care of Mrs. Patrick. As we left the farm, I looked back at the only home I'd ever known, feeling the weight of my past and the uncertain promise of my future. As we drove away from the farm, the landscape of my past turned into a blur of green and gray, a picture fading into the background of my new reality. Seated next to Mrs. Patrick in the warmth of her car, I started to feel a cautious hope for what lay ahead. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I felt a true sense of safety a sanctuary from the chaos that had ensnared my life. Yet beneath this newfound security, my emotions churned, betrayal from those I had trusted, relief from the danger I was escaping, fear of the unknown ahead, and a budding hope kindled by Mrs. Patrick's words. Mrs. Patrick, sensing my tumultuous state, broke the silence as we drove. Jack, I know today has been extraordinarily difficult, and the days ahead will involve many changes, but remember, you're not alone anymore, she assured me, her voice a soothing balm to my frayed nerves. She revealed that she had been observing the farm for some time, suspecting that not all was as it seemed. Her intervention, she explained, wasn't solely about the property itself, but was driven by a concern for my well-being. As we arrived at her estate, I was struck by its grandeur. The house, large yet welcoming, was surrounded by lush gardens bursting with vibrant colors, a stark contrast to the drab existence I had known. The gardens, a riot of hues, seemed almost surreal in their beauty, providing a visual feast that lifted my spirits. Over the subsequent days, Mrs. Patrick took the necessary legal steps to stabilize my situation. She was appointed my temporary guardian, and the process to officially make her my foster parent was initiated. During this period, I came to learn more about her. Unable to have children of her own, and having lost her husband a few years prior, she lived in a large estate that seemed too quiet for just one person. It was clear her heart had ample room for more. One sunny afternoon, as we meandered through her rose garden, the air fragrant with the scent of blooms, Mrs. Patrick paused and faced me. Her expression was earnest. Jack, I want you to understand that you are not a replacement or a charity case. She began, her voice firm yet kind. You are a brave young boy who deserves a chance at happiness. I hope with time, you will come to see this place as your home. Her words, sincere and heartfelt, planted a seed of hope in me. Maybe, just maybe, I could really start a new life here, one filled with love and stability. But life, as I was learning, is seldom straightforward. Just when I began to feel secure in my new environment, the past reared its head one more time. A few weeks after settling in with Mrs. Patrick, an unexpected call came from the police. They wanted to discuss the ongoing investigation into my father and Olivia. Anxiously, I went to the station where an officer handed me a letter found among Olivia's possessions. It was addressed to me, from my mother. Holding the envelope, my hands trembled as I felt the weight of its contents. Inside, written in my mother's elegant hand, were words of pure love and longing. She spoke of her deep affection for me, her aspirations for my future, and her profound regret at not being there to witness it. The letter, a mixture of love and sorrow, shattered yet healed parts of me. Her words echoed in my heart, 
affirming that despite her physical absence, her love had always been with me. As I absorbed her words, a profound sense of clarity settled over me. The betrayal and secrecy I had faced were now overshadowed by the undeniable truth of my mother's love. This revelation, though painful, brought a strange relief. It reassured me of my worth and solidified my resolve to embrace the new life Mrs. Patrick offered. With each passing day, the estate began to feel more like home. The shadows of my past receded, making way for a future I had once thought unattainable. Seated next to Mrs. Patrick in the warmth of her car, driving away from the police station, I realized that life was offering me a new beginning. As we navigated the roads leading back to the estate, the landscape of my past once filled with uncertainty and fear, faded into a backdrop of vibrant greens and grace, a mere setting for the unfolding story of my new reality. I didn't even realize I needed it until it was in my hands a letter from a mother I never got to know. It was a piece of my past that Olivia had tried to erase, but now, it was finally mine. This link to my mother, a connection long denied, became a cherished possession as the weeks turned into months, and the legal proceedings against Olivia and my father unfolded. They were eventually found guilty of fraud and child neglect. My father, seeking redemption, tried to reach out, longing to apologize and to reconnect. But for me, the path forward did not include him, not yet at least. Forgiveness is a complex journey, and I wasn't ready to embark on it. Living with Mrs. Patrick, who I came to affectionately call Patricia, was a blend of everyday routines and extraordinary moments. School, which had once seemed like a distant, unattainable dream, became a staple in my daily life. Patricia supported me in every way she encouraged my studies, supported my exploration of new hobbies, and most importantly, she helped me navigate the tangled emotions of my past. One evening, as we sat watching the sunset from the porch, the sky a canvas of orange and pink, Patricia turned to me and shared a thought that struck a deep chord. Jack, all families are built differently. Some are formed by blood, others by bonds that are stronger than blood. We're the latter, and I couldn't be prouder. That moment felt like the final piece of a puzzle slotting into place. The turmoil of my past had led me to this tranquil present, and the future was a canvas waiting to be painted with the vibrant colors of hope and healing. Patricia's words sizzled deep within me affirming a truth I was only beginning to grasp the definition of family could be much broader than traditional bonds, encompassing connections built on support, understanding, and unconditional love. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months as I settled into my new life with Patricia. The estate with its sprawling gardens and quiet corners became a sanctuary where I could grow and heal. We spent many afternoons wandering through the blooming gardens, discussing books, life, and my dreams for the future. Patricia, ever patient and wise, listened and advised, guiding me with a gentle hand. As the court cases wrapped up and the legalities were dealt with, I found myself thinking more about the future. I started to make plans for college, for travel, and perhaps one day, for ways I could help others who had faced challenges like mine. Patricia was supportive of all my plans, encouraging me to dream big and work hard. It wasn't just the practical support that made my life with Patricia transformative, it was the emotional healing that took place. The more I learned about empathy, compassion, and resilience from her, the more I began to understand the depth of what I had experienced. The process of healing from the past was slow and sometimes painful, but it was also filled with moments of profound realization and growth. And now, as I reflect back on the journey from the shadows into the light, I see how far I've come. From a childhood overshadowed by neglect and deception to a life enriched by love and new opportunities. This story, my story, doesn't just end with a new beginning. It continues each day with each new challenge and triumph. This tale is more than just my personal narrative. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the transformative power of compassion. To anyone who finds themselves in the darkness of despair, remember, the path to light often begins with the courage to step forward and the support of just one person who believes in you. Thank you for walking this journey with me through trials and tribulations towards a horizon bright with promise. As I stand now, ready to face whatever comes next, I do so not alone, but with a family chosen not by blood, but by bonds forged in the depths of adversity and strengthened in the warmth of mutual respect and love.